Can I bring my thing down when I'm reading? Sure. Okay. Happy Noontide to everyone. So today is a healing service, as you know, and you have the psalm, but if you're joining us online, the psalm is on page 607 of the Book of Common Prayer. And Psalm 19, 7 to 14, page 607 of the Book of Common Prayer. Today, the church remembers William Porcher de Bose. William Porcher de Bose, probably the most original and creative thinker in the American Episcopal Church, has ever produced, spent most of his life as a professor at the University of the South in Sewanee, Tennessee. He was not widely traveled and not widely known until at the age of 56, he published the first of several books on theology that made him respected, not only in his own country, but in England and France. DeBose was born in 1836 in South Carolina into a wealthy and cultured Huguenot family. At the University of Virginia, he acquired fluent knowledge of Greek and other languages, which helped him lay the foundation for, for a profound understanding of the New Testament. His theological studies were begun at the Episcopal Seminary in Camden, South Carolina. He was ordained in 1861 and became an officer and chaplain in the Confederate, Confederate Army. Doctrine and life were always in close conversation for DeBose. In a series of books, he, prob he probed the inner meaning of the Gospels, the Epistles of Paul, and the Epistle to the Hebrews. He treated life and doctrine as a dramatic dialogue, fusing the best of contemporary thought and criticism with his own strong inner faith. The result was both a personal and scriptural Catholic theology. He reflected as he acknowledged the great religious movements of the 19th century, the Tractarianism of Oxford, the Liberalism of F. D. Morris, the scholarship of the Germans, and the evangelical spirit that was so pervasive at the time. The richness and complexity of Du Bois's thought are not easily captured in a few words, but the following passage, written shortly before his death in 1918, is a characteristic sample of his theology. God has placed forever before our eyes, not the image, but the very person of the spiritual man. We have not 
We have not to ascend into heaven to bring him down, nor to descend into the abyss to bring him up, for he is with us and near us and in us. We have only to confess with our mouths that he is Lord and believe in our hearts that God has raised him from the dead and raised us in him, and we shall live. Grace and peace be with you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of peace, you have taught us that in returning and rest we shall be saved, in quietness and confidence shall be our strength. By the might of your Spirit, lift us, we pray, to your presence, where we may be still and know that you are God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first lesson is from the book of James. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with a bridle. If we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships. Though they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them, yet they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire, and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world of iniquity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creatures, can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species, but no one can tame the tongue, a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it, we bless the Lord and Father, and with it, we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or a grapevine figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. Welcome to Gina and David. Our psalm, we're doing a healing service today, which is the Pink Pages, and our psalm is on page 607. Psalm 19, verses 7 to 14, page 607. And uh, how about I say the odd verses and you say the even verses? Psalm 19, verses 7 to 14, page 607. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. Fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter by far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can tell how often he offends? Friends me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. 
O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Today's gospel is from Luke. Jesus said, There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels with, to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus, in like manner, evil things. But now he is comforted here and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us, a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. He said, Then, Father, I beg you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers that he may warn them so that they will not also come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, they have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, no, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to them, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, Neither will they be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. The word of the Lord. No, no truer thing has been said. Mm -hmm. We all have the opportunities to hear the truth around us, and we close our ears to that quite often. Today's reflection is a reading from a commentary on St. John's Gospel by Augustine. I am the living bread which has come down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread shall live forever. The bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. How could flesh comprehend that the Lord it was giving the name flesh to bread? He calls it flesh, something which, cannot, which flesh cannot comprehend. His hearers were horrified at this statement. They said it was too much for them. They thought it was impossible. It is my flesh, Jesus says, for the life of the world. Believers know the body of Christ if they do not neglect to be the body of Christ. Let them become the body of Christ if they wish to live by the spirit of Christ. You are a human being. You have both a spirit and a body. I call spirit that which is called soul, <coughs> that which makes you human, for you consist of soul and body. And so you have an invisible <clears throat> invisible spirit and a visible body. Tell me which lives from the other. Does your spirit live from the body or your body from the, your spirit? Every living person can answer that question. And if any cannot answer it, I do not think they are alive. What do they answer? <clears throat> my body, of course, lives by my spirit within me. If you would then live by the spirit of Christ, be rooted in the body of Christ, my body does not live by your spirit. My body lives by my spirit and your body by your spirit. The body of Christ can live only by the spirit of Christ. That is why the Apostle Paul, expounding on this bread, says, There is one bread, but we, many though we be, are one body. O sacrament of goodness, O sign of unity, O bond of charity, whoever would live knows wherein the sources of life resides. Draw near believe, be embodied that you have, that you may be made to live. Do not flee from intimacy with your fellow Christians. Do not be a rotten member that deserves to be cut off. 
Do not be deformed, a deformed member of which the body is ashamed. Be a just, healthy, and sound member of the body of Christ. Cleave to the body and live for God by God. Let us name before God those for whom we offer our prayers. We pray for those in our parish cycle of prayer for this week. Judy Tyner, Lynn Weiss, Mary Stewart, Anne Patry, Brenda Enney and family, and Claire Brooks. And those who have asked for our prayers, including Bob Levison, Lee Ann Meinhold Keese, Beverly Hoy, Dixie, Roxana, David and Gina Halfmeister, Sophia, Olga, Ngozi, and Joseph, Dan Dowdy, Chester McCorkle, Elizabeth and Joe, Larry Myrick, Margaret, Bettina, Bob and Kathleen, Glenn, Gail, Laurie and Jim, and Martha Florney. God the Father, your will for all people is health and salvation. We praise, we praise you, you and, and thank you, you, O Lord. God the Son, you came that we might have life and might have it more abundantly. We praise, we praise you, you and thank you, O Lord. God the Holy Spirit, you make our bodies the temple of your presence. We praise, we praise you, you and thank you, O Lord. Holy Trinity, one God, in you we live and move and have our being. We, we praise, praise you and thank you, O Lord. Lord. Lord, grant your healing grace to all who are sick, injured, or disabled, that they may be made whole. Hear, Hear us, us, O Lord, Lord of life. life. Grant to all who seek your guidance and to all who are lonely, anxious, or despondent a knowledge of your will and an awareness of your presence. Hear, Hear us, O Lord, Lord of life. life. Mend broken relationships and restore those in emotional distress to soundness of mind and serenity of spirit. Hear us, Hear us o, Lord o Lord of life. life. Bless physicians, nurses, and all others who minister to the suffering, granting them wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience. Hear, Hear us, us, O Lord, o Lord of life. Of life. Grant to the dying peace, and uphold by the grace and consolation of your Holy Spirit those who are bereaved, the victims of many shootings in America, the 622,000 Americans who have lost their lives to COVID-19. Hear, Hear us, O Lord, Lord of life. Restore to wholeness whatever is broken by human sin in our lives, in our nation, and in the world. Hear us, Hear us O Lord, Lord of life. life. You are the Lord who does wonders. You have, you have declared, declared your, your power among, among the peoples. peoples. With you, O Lord, is the well of life. And, and in, in your, your light we see light. light. Hear us, O Lord of life. Heal, Heal us and make, and make us whole. whole. O Lord our God, accept the prayers, fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look upon us with compassion and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may have received mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most, Most merciful, merciful God, God, we, we confess, confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy, have mercy on us and forgive us, that, that we may delight in your will and, and walk in your ways 
to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Savior of the world, by your cross and precious blood, you have redeemed us. Save us and help us, we, we humbly beseech you, O Lord. The Almighty God, who is a strong tower to all who put their trust in him, to whom all things in heaven, on earth, and under the earth bow and obey, be now and evermore your defense, and make you know and feel that the only name under heaven given for help and salvation is the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Diane, I lay my hands upon you and anoint you with oil in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, beseeching him to uphold you and fill you with his grace, that you may know the healing power of his love. Amen. Amen. David, I lay my hands upon you and anoint you with oil in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, beseeching him to uphold you and fill you with his grace. That you may know the healing power of his love. Amen. Amen. Gina, I lay my hands upon you and anoint you with oil in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, beseeching him to uphold you and fill you with his grace, that you may know the healing power of his love. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your, your name. name. Your, your kingdom come, your, your will be done, done on earth as in heaven. Give, give us, us today our daily bread. bread. Forgive, forgive us our, our sins as we forgive, forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver and us from evil. For, for the kingdom, kingdom the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, so draw our hearts to you, so guide our minds, so fill our imaginations, so control our wills, that we may be wholly yours, ever utterly dedicated to you. And then use us, we pray, as you will, and always to your glory and the welfare of your people, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. May God the Father bless us, God the Son heal us, God the Holy Spirit give us strength. May God the, the Holy and Undivided Trinity guard our bodies, save our souls, and bring us safely to his heavenly country where he lived and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the God of peace make you perfect and holy that you may kept, be kept safe and blameless in the spirit, soul, and body for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.